Pleasure to welcome to the podcast, Maryland goalie, JJ, Julia, JJ Suriano. Uh, should we go by JJ? Should we go by Julia? Oh, let's go by JJ. Go by JJ, Julia, and then a <laughs> second J. What is that second J? Um, There's really no second J in my name. My goalie coach just gave it to me in like third grade. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Well, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Um, well, JJ, I'd love to hear the story uh, of your very first time jumping into goal. Do you remember that? Sure do. <laughs> right. um, it was for a club. It was or it was for rec. So it was when everyone had to take a turn. Um, first time, they were like, all right, your turn to hop in. And I started sobbing. I was like, absolutely not. There's no way I'm getting in there. Like, you're crazy. So I'm sobbing and they're like, okay, okay, fine. Like you don't have to, but like next week you're going to have to do it. Um, and then the next week rolls around and I'm like, all right, I got this. My, my mom helped me put the pads on. I'm like, all right, I got this. And my parents, I feel like goalie parents are all the same way. Like we love to keep stats. Um, and they're like, you, like you had like 10 saves, you let two in. They were like, that was awesome. And I came off the field and I was like, wow, like that was like, that's it. Like that was the most fun I've ever had holding a lacrosse stick. And <laughs> I kind of knew from there that I was like, I want to do this again. Like that yeah. was really, really fun. I need to recapture that magic. Um, what was it about? <laughs> do you think about the position that, that brought you to tears before you even tried it? I mean, who in their right mind would stand in front of people throwing anything at you let alone a hard rubber ball um and it was like back when you were like seven or eight no one wanted to do that like it's right. terrifying right um i just think the idea of it like so dumb like why would anyone want to do that <laughs> um but i ended up loving it <laughs> that's cool what do you think um i mean besides from that like initial praise or that initial like you know, the parents come and be like, oh, you did so great. What was it about the position that you really uh, liked? I honestly have no idea what made it like that <laughs> first time so fun. Yeah. Um, I wasn't really great at field. <laughs> like, never, not really great around a field stick. Um, and I felt like this was something that I was like, wow, I'm kind of like decent at it. At like third grade, like can't really be that good. But I was like, I'm better at this than you know, other things that I've done before. And I right. kind of want to get better at this. And it, I don't know, I guess the adrenaline, just something about it. I don't know. It was just exciting and different and a lot of fun. Yeah. So you play, uh, you, you play goalie, you love it. And then, so you start playing like both field and goalie, right? At, immediately, I, I imagine. Yeah. It was like played field maybe two more times after that. And then like goalie one more time to finish up the season. And then that was like the end of the spring by the time it was my turn to go in cage. Um, and then next season rolled around and I was like, I'm, I'm just going to do goalie. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so how did you go about then like learning how to be a goalie? I mean, you grew up in, in Baltimore or Baltimore area. I imagine yeah. you some access to some pretty good coaching. <clears throat> um, but how did you specifically learn how to, how to make saves? Yeah. So my aunt, was a All-American goalie at Loyola. She graduated in 2016. Um, so she kind of taught me everything I know. Um, I have a picture of her, like, coaching me on my high school field, um, which ended up being, like, a full circle moment. But, um, no, I trained with her a bunch. She taught me everything from the fundamentals up um, and definitely was just my biggest supporter and continues to be my biggest supporter and someone I can – you know, rely on whenever I need help with anything concerning goalie. That's cool. What did some of those early coaching sessions uh, look like between between you and her? You know, I guess maybe said another way, if there's a young goalie or even like a coach who's just like coaching a goalie day number one, you know, what, what, are, what are like the first kind of things that you think are important to focus on? Yeah, I think establishing a good relationship with you're going to have to get your body in front of the ball. I think Every single goalie that I train when they're just starting out, I tell them, you got to be willing to put everything behind the ball and you got to be willing to get your stick, your legs, your head, whatever it takes there. Um, so those early training sessions were all about learning how to step to the ball, how to get your hands out to the ball, just the basic fundamentals. 
Um, and then as I got more comfortable with being willing to get hit with that ball, we could move on from there to more drills and faster shots. Um, but starting out, it's definitely just basic step, hands, seeing the ball and getting comfortable with getting hit with the ball. Yeah. It's so important because like the body's natural reaction is to like get out of the way. And you see yeah. so many young goalies, <laughs> like they're in like this great stance and then, you know, the, the shot comes over here and they kind of go with their body that yeah. way and try to get it over with their hands totally uh, this way. And so you, you I mean, you got to just muscle memory and kind of build that into where it's totally, it's, it's, it's nature to go at, you know, it's now your natural reaction to go after it. Um, yeah. I imagine you took a few lumps, you know, as early as a kid that like really, that really hurt. Um, I mean, I started playing goalie in college and like, I took one on the shin and I wanted to cry now, now <laughs> you know, like I imagine an eight year old or a nine year old in there. And it's like, how do you, um, <laughs> embrace that pain? So <laughs> my aunt actually had a great quote. She said, the pain of letting a ball in is worse than the pain of getting hit. <laughs> and I just decided to live by that. I would rather get hit by a ball and not have it go in than maybe let a ball in that would hurt. But like, I'd rather keep, you know, that zero on the board as long as I can. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather get hit by that. Um, no, but there are definitely a few times where I've been like, wow, like that, that hurts. But <laughs> knowing that it didn't go in kind of makes the pain a little bit better. <laughs> yeah. I think a big um, part of that too, and sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but I think a big part no, of that good. is, is, uh, you know, the, your coaches and your parents and everyone else going nuts when you do make a save, like, you know, cause you get yeah. hit and like, if you get that positive reaction, that feels really good. Right. Totally. When people are just like, way to go, Damon, that was a sick save. And yeah. you know, <laughs> if, if you don't get that now, all of a sudden, like I got this huge bruise and I'm like, what is going <laughs> on here? Right. And and yeah. so I think, you know, if anybody's listening to that, just go nuts on, on saves is, totally. a, is a key point. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was always a body save goalie. I still am a big body save goalie. So it really helps after, you know, getting a thigh blast or something to hear my teammates be like, way to go, JJ, like way to eat that. I'm like, yeah, thank you. Yeah. It makes it worth it. <laughs> yeah. And what about the, the padding when you were first starting? What, what did you use? <laughs> um, use one of my aunt's old helmets um stx like the blue chest protector um the blue stx gloves the sultra one like the female i don't one? even know okay yeah probably yeah um of course the the goalie pant thigh pads um i actually still have them i never switched out what thigh pads i used all through my career so nice. i have the same thigh pads from third grade which are disgusting yeah um and then <laughs> um hockey shin guards so my dad would get a roll of tape because I was way too small for them. You yeah. put the shin guards on me that like covered the knee, went down my ankle, just taped me into those. Um, and that's how <laughs> I started out. The, I looked like a, like a refrigerator, like a mini fridge out there. Like I was yeah. padded up. Love it. Yeah. Well, that's important. That's important too. Right. Um, anyway. Yeah. And then, um, yeah. And then when you're training like the softies, right, the soft balls and, mm -hmm. the, and the tennis balls, I think are, are important. Um, Agreed. Yep. Uh, very cool. So I guess early on, was there like, was there like any big aha moments that you had? Like, man, it were just kind of like clicked or, or was it just sort of a slow progression of, you know, le learning what, what, what was your coach's name by the way? Is she a Suriano? No, she's a wolf, Molly Wolf. Oh, oh Molly Wolf. Molly yeah. Wolf. <laughs> I haven't had her on the podcast, but that name definitely is, uh, is, sounds familiar. Yeah. She did pro too. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's why. I think that's why. Anyway. Yeah. Um, question was like it was there one big moment where it kind of all came together or just kind of a slow slow sort of progression for you I think it was more of a slow progression just because the first time I ever got engaged like I was naturally moving to the ball which mm. my parents were still like I don't know how any of that happened but I'd say it was just building my confidence from there because I loved what I was doing in there and I had the instincts to go to the ball. So I just think from there, it was just fine tuning and getting the fundamentals locked in and yeah. then increasing from there and adding different things to my game kind of as I went on. Yeah. Interesting. 
did you guys did you guys play on full size goals when you were youth or, or was it like smaller goals? Oh no, it was full size. Yeah. Was... So how like and you're not that tall right now, right? Like you're, no. <laughs> the, you're listed at five three. I don't and I don't know if you guys inflate a little bit or no. Or no five three, I'm, right? Five three. Yep. Okay. All right. <laughs> See, I'm five eight, and in the program, I was listed at five ten. So the the guys, always, the guys always inflate it in a little yeah. bit. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, my my point is like, you know, when you're that, I imagine as a kid, you're even smaller. And Tiny. so, how do you like, <laughs> how do you um, coach a goalie who's that small? Because, you know, you can you can you're giving up tons of the upper part of the goal, and like, there's a way like yeah. where you could you still want to play like fundamental. I think mm-hmm. I don't know. What's what's your thoughts on that? Yes. So I train a lot of goalies who are on the younger end, like 9, 10, 11. So they're definitely on the shorter end. Um, and I tell them, I'm like, listen, I'm short too, but we can get up there. Like, I promise you, we can get up there. If you get yourself as tall as possible, you know, I say being a goalie, it's a game of surface area. The bigger you can make yourself, the more saves you're going to make. And being not that big, I have to figure out ways to get there. So that might mean on a high shot, I might end up, slightly on my tiptoes, slightly elevated, super tall, like legs fully extended and my arms fully extended up rather than a lot of coaches will teach like punch out to the ball. Um, So I teach girls go up because that gives, you know, I can only go this high Mm -hmm. with my stick here. But if I go straight up, I'm not, you know, harming my timing or like doing anything to make the save harder on myself. I'm giving myself more height and allowing myself to reach higher. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of just how I teach that. Just, I tell them, get tall, just get tall. However you can. Yeah. I like that. So I guess sticking with that topic, are there any other tips you give specifically to the shorter goalies? Shorter. Well, I just say, um, you know, the shorter you are, the closer you are to the ground. So low saves are hypothetically a little bit easier. Um, I love low saves. I love low shots just because I'm already there. <laughs> you know, I talk yeah. to goalies who are like super tall and they're like, you get down there so quick. And I'm like, I'm already down there. So like, <laughs> it makes it easy. Um, but I think don't let your size limit you. I think a lot of the time and people will look for an excuse as to why they let a goal in or, you know, I'm not able to do this because I'm too short or I'm not fast enough. I'm not strong enough. Like you create those excuses for yourself. And instead of feeding into those, you know, I'm not tall enough, fast enough, strong enough, build off of those and find what works for you to kind of work around the things that might be a disadvantage for you. Just don't let what people tell you or, you know, the picture of a goalie deter you from reaching your full potential. Yeah, I like that a lot. And the cool thing is there is already examples of, goalies who are shorter, like who have had great success, right. And, and goalies who are taller, who had great success. So I think kind Mm -hmm. of, you know, watching some of those and idolizing, not idolizing, but just watching them and learning from them, um, as a small goalie, you know, you can watch JJ play if you're five foot three or, or, you know, on the men's side, you can watch Adam Gittleman and, um, you know, JD Colarusso and some of these Landon Whitney, some of these five, eight goalies, right. Um, and just kind of see how they play and adapt that to your game. Yeah. Uh, on that topic, what what goalies when you were growing up did you like to watch play? Uh, besides Molly, um, yeah, obviously Molly was my number one. Yeah. Um, I loved watching Megan Taylor. I mean, mm. she's my height. Um, yeah. So seeing that, seeing someone like you don't have to be super tall to be a goalie. Um, yeah. Definitely got a lot of um, just watching her game. Got a lot of um, ideas from her. Um, I really like how Madison do set plays. Mm. I think she's unbelievably athletic and I yeah. see a little bit of myself in her even now. Um, just the way that she plays is so dynamic and she's willing to throw her body at everything. Um, so I've loved watching her. Taylor Marino has very similar style. Um, same thing, throwing her body at everything. Um, so I'd say kind of those four are who I've like watched the most. Love it. Love it. Um, you know, when you watch Megan Taylor play and even uh, Emily Sterling, you know, they're like when they set up with their stance, it's like true shoulder width. You know, a lot of times mm-hmm. goalie goalie coaches say, start with your legs shoulder width apart. And and what you're seeing now is like a little bit wider and and some even mm-hmm. on the guy's side and, and girls are starting to do it for that matter. You look at Shay, she's really wide 
Um, yeah. They're starting to get really wide in the base. But you look at Emily and you look at Megan and they are like, you know, very, very much shoulder width apart. Do you, do you mm -hmm. kind of like that? How, how do you play with, with your feet? Try to think. It's like hard to think about what I do. Um, like I don't, I don't think we could do, about. We could do a little demo. We take can a do little, a little, a little, a little demo. Here. Let's see. Let's see. I'm trying to, right. I'm trying to think. Let's see. Yeah. I'm like slightly outside of shoulder okay. width, very okay. slightly. Yeah. Um, I find that when I get too wide, it decreases my height. Um, you yeah. know, the wider you get, the lower you are. Right. Um, right. So I'm exposing myself up high. Um, and for me, I find it a lot easier to move once I'm. A little bit more narrow i feel i just feel personally more balanced when i'm just slightly shoulder width apart um if i'm too narrow i can't get that explosion off um if i'm too wide i also can't get that explosion off so it's just finding the place where i feel the most balanced and like yeah. i can get anywhere in the cage yeah and and right outside shoulder width is that for you one of the things you just did there um is that little <laughs> like hot move right kind of like jumping yeah. jumping into your stance <laughs> talk to me about that about why, about why you do that. Cause I, I love it. I love it. I'm a huge <laughs> advocate of that move. Yeah. So like, I don't even really realize that I do it. <laughs> like I said before, I don't know what I'm doing in cage. I just go and I just hope for the best. Um, but that's just to get me as balanced as possible. It gets right. me in the right position on my feet where I'm not on my heels, on my toes. I'm on the balls of my feet. Um, I get my legs loaded up when I do that. So I'm at yeah. the perfect like squat to I'm not too high, not too low. I get perfect in my squat and it lets me just set for that half second right before that ball comes out of the stick. Mm -hmm. I'm set. I'm balanced. Um, that was the biggest thing actually coming into college. The biggest adjustment I had to make was get set, stop moving your feet, get set. And I think that that little hop kind of happened throughout the course of last year and seeing these shots, um, you just have to get set. And that little hop right there allows me to get my eyes focused on that ball, my body set, balance and holding mm -hmm. so that I'm able to use all my energy in that one split second to make that save rather than maybe moving and being unbalanced. Yeah. I mean, it's nearly impossible. I'm going to say it's fully impossible if you do it the right way to land after that little hop and not be in a, like a balanced athletic position, right? Like, yeah. if you, you, and it's like such a quick reset. Like it's a quick reset to get your mind just empty. Like once I hit that reset, I stop my communication. Yeah. So it's that split second before the ball comes out, no more communication. It's just me dialed in on that ball. That's what, yeah, and th exactly. Like, cause a lot of times some goalies say like, well, I'm trying to communicate and I'm saying balls top, right. And Megan, you're the slide and, and, and there's all this going on. And then I, I like, I, I lose focus on, on the, on the shot. Yeah. Right. And, and that can serve as sort of a, a little physical, like lock-in where it's like, all right, now it's time mm -hmm. to like make the save. And I'm hundred percent focused um, yeah. on the ball. When I do that little hop. Among, totally. uh, and, and you get the physical benefits uh, of like being balanced, being right, having the weight right on the balls of the feet. The You know, when when you land, you come down a little bit, right? Like, so the legs mm -hmm. get loaded up a little bit and they're ready to go. Totally. Um, love it. Love it. Um, okay. Yeah. And then Madison, I, I, I worked with Madison um, and sponsored her like a couple of years ago and got to know her really mm -hmm. well. And uh, what a, what a hero! She's awesome. I love watching her play. And she's awesome. She's cool, <laughs> yeah, young lady. Have you totally. met her? Yeah, I have. Um, I met her like during recruiting. Um, after I committed, I stayed in touch with her. Saw her, mm. um, like last fall. Uh, this past summer, I saw her. I just think she's a great human and a great goalie. 100%. Like she's she's yeah. just great. Yeah, hundred percent agree. Um, cool. So, um, talk to me about then high school lacrosse. Um, I'd love to hear, I'd love to hear that and kind of leading into your recruiting journey, if you could. Yeah. Um, freshman year, I was, you know, super excited, super eager. You know, there was one goalie ahead of me who was already on varsity, um, worked my tail off. I was in the weight room every day, getting shots as many times as possible. Um, just doing whatever I could, um, and just going into it, knowing I was going against, like, I was four, I was 14 years old, 15 years old. I'm going against like 18 year olds. And I'm like, whoa, mm -hmm. like I've never gone against anyone like that before. Um, so just kind of switching my mindset, like, all right, like we're, we're at the big show now, <laughs> like got to lock in, you got to stay confident and know like 
it's going to be a little bit harder than what you're used to. Um, so I got myself in a good mental spot. And then from there, you know, I just made my way through tryouts. I made varsity as a freshman. I was super pumped for it. Nice. Um, I know it was one of like, I was like, Oh, this is so cool. Um, super fun. Obviously freshman year got canceled because of COVID, which was super disappointing. Mm. Um, but then sophomore year came back and I had been working out, lifting, running, getting shots for like that entire year leading up to the sophomore season. Um, super pumped with my sophomore season. Like I made all conference, um, had a lot of fun with the team. Um, and then my junior year, um, we got a new coach. It was actually my aunt now became the coach of the team, which was super special. Um, so that was just a really exciting um, kind of shift. I loved my coach the first two years, uh, Brooke Shriver. She's now the associate head at Navy. Um, mm. She was awesome, um, but it was super special to have a chance to be coached by my aunt for two years. Um, that's something like I will never take for granted. I just think that was so special. Sure. Um, junior year was awesome. We made it to the quarter semifinals for the first time in nine years. Um, that was a really special team, really special season. Um, and then senior year, we made it to quarterfinals. Um, another just awesome season. And I just feel like my game improved from my sophomore to junior year. I kind of gained that confidence as now being an upperclassman. Right. And I let that carry on into my leadership. Um, and just my work ethic throughout the rest of my high school career. Love it. How do you, um, you mentioned sort of, uh, you know, getting in the right mindset to play with these 18 year olds and talk to me more about that because a lot of times goalies will, a lot of, one of the questions I get that's pretty common is like, Hey, I'm in junior high, I'm going up to high school and I'm a little bit nervous, right? Like, or, Hey, I'm, I'm basically moving up in level. These kids are really good. And I'm a little bit nervous yeah. about my ability. So how did you, what specifically did you do to get in the right mindset? Um, I'm the type of goalie where I love a challenge. If it's not hard, then I'm not having fun. Mm. If, you know, it's not challenging me, I feel like I'm not getting anything out of it. So going into it, I was like, this is going to be a new challenge that I'm going to have to deal with. And I want to be the best goalie that I can and not let it show that I'm a freshman. I think that was the biggest thing. Come in, don't, make it seem like you're timid, you're scared. Like, oh, I'm a freshman. Like, I'm not supposed to do X, Y, Z. Like, I'm not supposed to be the starter. I'm not supposed to make saves. Like, flip that mindset. Like, you're a freshman. If you can be the starter, make these crazy saves against these girls who are four years older than you, like, that's awesome. And you should want to push yourself to get there every single day. And I think that my mindset just being, you know, the men, the Maryland men's team has saying, be the best. Like that was kind of my motto, just be the best. Don't let it show that you're a freshman. Uh, just have the confidence to go in there, dominate, know it's going to be challenging, embrace the challenge, um, but have fun doing it. Love it. Yeah. Great tips. Great tips. Right. I mean, such a, such a um, flipping it on, flipping it on its head. A lot of people are nervous going into it. Well, well, this is a challenge and I'm excited by mm -hmm. that challenge and what a great opportunity, right? A lot of times too, totally. as a freshman, like no one, no one expects you to go out there and dominate. Right. Yeah. And so like you know, that pressure's off. Um, yeah. yeah. So get in there, get out there and, and play your heart out. Totally. Um, cool. And then um, you commit to Maryland. Mm -hmm. um, talk to me about the recruiting process. Um, I started with a list of 33 schools and 33. My club, 33. I was like, I don't know what I want. Like All I got a list of like, I like, maybe four D3s. Okay. I don't know. I was like, I don't know what I want. I want to keep my options open. You never know. So my club coach, he was like, every time you send an email and you're CCing me on them, it's just way too many emails in my inbox. Like cut your list down. I was like, great. All right. So I got it down <laughs> to like 25. I'm like, great. <laughs> He's like, you got to stop. I'm like, fair enough. Yeah. Um, so cut it down. Um, and then kind of as that recruiting summer went on, kept making highlight videos, sending out, um, clips sending out emails um a lot of the camps so i didn't do a lot of individual school camps i mostly did camps where there were a lot of coaches from multiple schools in attendance just um so that i wasn't spending like a lot of money to go to like 10 different schools when right. all those 10 schools could have been at one camp 
So I did a few of those. Quickly, what, and, would that be like a goalie smith or like what kind of camps? Goalie smith is awesome. So they didn't have the recruiting camp when I went through recruiting. Oh. Um, but I, I so wish that I had that during it, recruiting. Yeah, I yeah. thought, I mean, there were so many coaches there on the men's and the women's side. It was awesome. Got it. But a camp like that. I can't back, like back that. And, you, yeah. yeah. So I did something like lacrosse masters, like gate top 20, just schools with a lot or camps with a lot of schools in attendance. Okay. Uh, did a few of those, kept sending emails out. Um, and, then, and then would you email the coaches and say like, Hey, I'm going to be at the gate top 20 camp and I'm JJ yes. and I have a red helmet and that kind yeah, of, yeah, pretty kind much. Of I'd be like, I'd be like in the header, I'd be like Suriano goalie Skywalker 79, like, I don't, I would so much information in there. Like looking back yeah. at it, like I was so stressed about these emails, just sending them out. But you no, know, the emails were definitely helpful. We're just making sure like these coaches knew like, Hey, I'm still interested. Like come check me out. Like, yeah. This is what we got going on. These are the camps I'm going to. Um, and then as the summer went on, I did more and more research into the different schools that I was interested in. Um, and I narrowed it down to like eight schools. And I'm like, if any of these eight schools reach out, I'd be thrilled um academically the location um and obviously lacrosse flies yeah um so september one rolls around and i got like a bunch of texts a bunch of emails and i'm just so overwhelmed and i got a text from kathy and she's like hey like i'm not really one to like call people at midnight so let's set up a time to talk tomorrow i was like awesome like september one was my first day of school too so i was like this is a lot. Um, <laughs> the scheduled all that, that stuff around. Um, got on a call with Kathy. I don't even know what she said, but I hung up the phone and started just sobbing. I like, I don't know what was said, but I was like, "Wow, like this, this is this is the place." Um, I I can't even remember what she said. It just like I had this gut feeling that like, I had to go there. Um, I was still in contact with a few other schools that I was super interested in um like gotten on zooms and calls with those other schools but still like maryland was like wow like something special is good. like that program is something special those coaches are special um set up a visit for september 8th i went there visited the girls were just unbelievable the culture you could tell just yeah. from the five hours i was there was unmatched um and then I left the visit because I was told like, you shouldn't commit within like a day of visiting a school, like let it simmer. But I left and I called my club coach. And I said, listen, like, I know the rule, like maybe don't commit within a day, but like, I don't see myself going anywhere else. I yeah. see myself being the best version of myself, athletically, socially, academically at this place. And I see myself thriving here more so than any other school I was talking to. Um, so literally two hours after my visit, I called Kathy again and she goes, oh, you missed me already. And I go, <laughs> yes, but I'm also calling because I want to commit to Maryland. Um, That's amazing. And that was just just spe such a special moment and something that I wish I could relive over and over. <laughs> That's amazing. Congrats. And thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank, yeah. Thank you for telling that story. What would you say? Um, uh, I got an email, a question from a young goalie the other day, and he says, uh, I've sent emails to almost 30 colleges with my highlights attached and I've only heard back from one. What else should I do? Um, like past September one, when they're allowed to contact you. I imagine, I imagine it is, but I will certainly okay. clarify, <laughs> clarify that because they might not know that, right? Like some come goalies yeah. don't know that. Like they, they by law, by, by, I was going to say by law, by, by rule, they can't, they cannot contact you uh, before September one. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'd say just keep expressing interest. Obviously, don't keep flooding their inbox um, because they are, you know, still having to go to work every day, take other kids on visits, um, coach, you know, like right, right. these coaches still have a life outside mm -hmm. of recruiting. Um, but I'd say, you know, keep showing that you're interested, follow up. And I had my club coach and my like club director reach out for me just because they can get, they already have those connections established with those college coaches. Mm, that's um, a good point. Yeah. And normally college coaches will be very transparent and honest with um, club coaches. Like I had one college coach tell 
um, my coach, like we're not necessarily interested in her. So if she wants to move on that, like that, she can yeah. move on. Right. 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 And no, I mean, that was super time, helpful. Right? Yeah. Correct. Just knowing. Right. But um, I'd say also like, don't give up hope. Like the process is so long. Like September yeah. one's a start date. It doesn't end until, you know, you go to college for your first day, you right. know, it's right. a long, it's a long Sometimes process. Sometimes it doesn't so, even end then, right? With the transfer. Correct. With the transfers. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, great point about, yeah, some great points, um, about the coaches reaching out for you. That's good. Cause they've got that relationship. Um, yeah. And then keep expressing interest. Like when you have a new highlight reel and when you're going to a tournament that they're going to be at, uh, but yeah, not, not every day. Like, Hey, it's me again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, yeah, keep going, right. Keep going, it, you know, and, and know that it'll all work out. Know that it'll all work out because, yes. um, you know, lacrosse is a beautiful sport and it's so much fun and it's like there's very i've heard some scenarios where like they didn't it wasn't a good fit but for the most part like you're gonna have like the time of your life yeah at least i did <laughs> and i'm sure you are as well so you get yeah. to maryland i imagine your goalie game changes a little bit or talk to me about that yeah so i didn't try to change my game too much you know the coaches recruited me for a reason i didn't try to change my playing style too much but i did have to adapt um like i said earlier getting set sooner was kind of my biggest thing um that was just one thing that i changed um and these shots are coming out yeah i was just gonna say if just uh, if there's a young goalie that doesn't really like know what that means like you know a lot of times you know, when the ball's moving around or like, if you like, if you're watching a video and you freeze it right when the release point of the shot happens, like you look at the feet and like, like they're still moving. Right. And you don't mm -hmm. have that balance. You know, you're not set. And so that's what yeah. we're talking about, you know, where, especially when you move up in level, right. And it gets a little faster. Mm -hmm. Now the ball's moving faster and the players are running faster and, and you got to move faster and you got to get set quicker. And so that's what we're talking about here. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So this ball is moving around the eight faster. These cuts are coming in a lot harder and these shots are coming out differently than in a high school. I don't know how to describe it, but these shots are coming <laughs> out at times where like you're not expecting it to just because the level of IQ and the level of play is such a notch higher than high school. Yeah, Like these girls are wizards with their sticks. Yeah. So just knowing that you know, these shots are coming harder, faster. And when you're not expecting it, knowing that you have to adapt. So that means getting set quicker, tracking the ball faster and being more willing to use a body part to make a save. Like mm -hmm. today during practice, I'm pretty sure I made more saves with my body than my stick. Um, but that's just kind of how I adapted. Like I have probably quicker feet and quicker hands. So I adapted to being more aggressive with my feet and getting my body behind more shots pretty much. Yeah. Cool. Love it. What do you, what are your tips for tracking the ball? Tracking? I just said a lock in on it. You know, there's a yeah. lot that goes on in the eight. There's a lot that goes on on the field and you can lock in on the ball and still see everything going on on the field out of your peripheral vision. Um, I mean, you can't make a save if you're not looking at the ball bottom right. line. Right, right, um, right. So just find the ball, track it. I mean, I mean, there's really not much to it. You just got to see it. You can't save the ball if you don't see it. Right. Yeah. That's kind of what, like, that was kind of my tips about, like, you know, I, that I said, like, you know, people would ask me, how do I track the ball? And I'm like, just watch it. <laughs> like, I, I don't mean to like, be I, like, I'm not being rude know. here, but like, literally yeah. it's a mindset of like, just watch the ball, like wherever it goes. And that's sort of like this, this this focus of like, and this mindset of like, no matter where it goes, like I'm always going to be locked in on, even when it goes to the, mm -hmm. like the other end. Right. I would always, as a goalie, I would get like borderline anxiety. If I lost the ball, like even yeah. when it's on the other end, like, Whoa, Whoa, where's the ball? Who, who's, who's got yeah. it. Right. Like <laughs> that's, that should be the feeling you have when you lose track of it. So just like always watch the ball. And I think that that's tracking. Yeah. It's so simple, but it's, it makes the biggest difference. Yeah. If you're watching the ball, you don't see yeah. it, you don't save it. <laughs> exactly. And then like <laughs> when we talk about like the save technique too, like, you know, getting, you know, getting your hands out and like making the save, like out here in front of your body, as opposed to like in tight to your body, like that's going to allow you to see it right into your stick and track it right mm -hmm. into your stick. Right. Totally. Yeah. All right. We figured that yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs>